Greetings, uh, here is Fred and this is another video dedicated to Marvel Snap, a game that uh, I cannot say that I know in depth because I am a newbie, I started playing this game uh, around Christmas, but on the other hand I played this game extensively since I have discovered it, as you can see also from my collection level, basically from Christmas uh, I managed to go from collection level 0 to collection level 465 which means that I'm about to complete the second pool of cards. This will happen when I will reach the level 474. Uh, now if we consider that I'm playing from Christmas and that uh, today when I'm recording this video is the 5th of January basically it means that it took me slightly more than one week to make this uh, significant progression and uh, I would say that as a free-to-play player that's of course uh, <laughs> it means that I have played a lot of games already so I think I can comment uh, with uh, a certain degree of knowledge on the first pool of cards which are the the first that you will start to unlock in your Marvel Snap journey and this is going to be the content for the video today so if you are not familiar with Marvel Snap, if you need to know the fundamentals, etc, etc, in that case I would recommend you to watch first another video that I have already published on my YouTube channel. For today we are just going straight to the topic, straight to the first pool of cards of Marvel Snap, also because there are a number of cards to be commented and so this already has the potential to be an extremely long video. Right now you can see the cards that belong to the pool 1, let's say from Abomination until uh, mm, Namor. This is the order I have unlocked the card and this is the order I will uh, follow to comment them all. Starting from Abomination. So Abomination is, a <clears throat> I would say it's a good card. It's nothing um, fantastic, like there are better cards in its type, uh, but it's also not the worst. So I will say that it's a decent card. So this is the, a card that has no extra ability, this is uh, just for power play, you want to play this card at the beginning of the, at the end of the match, sorry, uh, just to secure a certain location, so please make sure that you have already secured a second location when you're going to play this, um, and if that is the case, yes, most likely you're going to secure your win because it has 9 of power, so it's a, quite a muscular card. There are better cards? In, let's say in this type that are just muscular and with no extra ability but I will say that Abomination also does its job so I will still consider this a decent card. The next one is Cyclops, this is a, a mid-game card and personally I do not like it at all also because in this case uh, there is uh, also no extra ability but in the end it does not bring a lot of power so this is a card that I was just playing uh, let's say the very early 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 phases uh, on Marvel Snap as soon as I started unlocking other cards that were costing 3 of course I immediately replaced the Cyclops from my deck because I don't really see it that useful let's say. Then we have Okai. Um, this is a, an early game card and I will say that it's kind of okay but I'm not the biggest fan of this card and the reason for that is that yes it has a, a nice um, a nice ability because if you play a card in the same location the next turn then you will get this bonus of plus two of power but on the other hand it has a big big disadvantage which is announcing to your opponent where you are going ideally to play next of course you could also decide not to play next um, in the same location but in that case then you don't take advantage of the full potential of this card because you will not get the bonus and on the other hand if you play on the same location to get the bonus your opponent might see your move, of course, and might try to counter it uh, in more effective ways. So that's the reason why I don't particularly like this card, because even though it has a decent bonus for a, an early game card, it still makes uh, your gameplay kind of predictable. Then we go to Hulk. Hulk is uh, basically like uh, Abomination, so all I said about, about Abomination also apply to Hulk. These are expensive cards that you play at the end of the match just to make some strong power play, in this case 12 of power, but there are no extra abilities. So it's just to secure a certain location with a massive muscular presence. So of course this is better than Abomination, it costs a little bit more but it also gives you 12 points rather than 9. Um, 
So of course between Abomination and Hulk, I prefer the Hulk. Then we have Iron Man, and Iron Man has an ongoing ability. It's the first card that we uh, that we see today with an ongoing ability. The ongoing ability is that basically your total power is double as this location. So it uh, relies on what other cards you have played in the same location, and then it will basically boost them uh, by doubling uh, the total power. So please make sure to play Iron Man together with uh, other cards, ideally strong cards, and then you will easily, um, let's say, maximize uh, the power in that location. Then let's complete this first line with Medusa. Medusa is a card that I will consider okay. Let's say that if it is played correctly, it's a good card. If you're only playing with, uh, of course, with pool one cards. Um, Alternatively, if it's not played correctly, it's completely useless. What do I mean with that? The ability is that if this is played at the middle location, it will get plus two of power and it will go up to four. So, of course, if you play it on the left or on the right, it's a kind of a waste because it will remain with this two of power. And that's not, of course, the optimal way of using Medusa. In some cases, you might not want or you might not be able to play the card in the middle location. Um, which is also a little bit of a waste, but if you're playing only with uh, cards from the pool one, I will still say that Medusa might have a sense because in most of the cases you might try to get the middle location and uh, in this way you can easily go to a plus four. So let's also do one thing, I will tell you per each line which are my favorite cards from this first line that we have just reviewed, I will say definitely Hulk for its muscular presence, and then probably Iron Man. <clears throat> Let's then move to the second line, which contains a number of cards that I don't like at all, starting from Misty Knight. This is an early game card, also no special ability, so it's basically completely wasted. If you're going to play cards that cost one, try at least to pick cards that have some extra special ability. Cards like Misty Knight, in my opinion, are just a waste, so don't play them. Um, simply remove them from your deck and pick a better card. <laughs> That's my simple advice. Then we have the Punisher. The Punisher is a kind of a mid-game card. Uh, it has also an ongoing capability, which is to add one of power for each opposing card in a certain location. So ideally, if you want to make sure to um, take the advantage of all its potential. You want to play this card only after you have seen that your opponent has played many cards in a certain location and then you, you know for sure that you are going to get the extra bonus. Um, it's an okay card, I will say. Then we have uh, Quicksilver. Quicksilver is basically like uh, Misty Knight. As you can see, they are the same type of card. Cost one, give you two of power and have no extra ability. These are cards that are simply terrible. And if you have them in your deck, I would recommend you to immediately replace them. So the only reason why you might want to have such card in your deck is uh, in case if you need to uh, upgrade them because you want to, uh, let's say, uh, rapidly go up in the collection level but apart from that in my opinion you should not really play such cards now what i can tell you there is one remote case where it might make sense to play a card like quicksilver and i'm going to tell you which is it's when basically you want to trick your opponent into believing that you are a noob because quicksilver is a noob card so if you are playing quicksilver you are definitely seen as a noob this might be convenient if you're not a noob, but you want to have your opponent believing that you are a noob. Because, for example, what I've seen very frequently is that if people play Quicksilver, the opponent will immediately snap thinking that, you know, you are completely bad at the game. And maybe you are not. You just want the opponent to believe it so that then they are going to snap. So that might be a strategy. But honestly, I mean, I do not really use this strategy, to, to be honest. I still think that cards like Misty Knight or Quicksilver have, has, have absolutely no place in a deck and you should simply replace them at all. But if you really want to give them a meaning, then play them, uh, as I was saying, just to give the idea that you might be a noob. Then let's move to the next one. It's another card that I don't like at all. Um, it's a Shocker, two of uh, energy, three of power, and no extra ability. So. It's basically in the same direction of a Cyclops, Quicksilver, Misty Knight. There is not much to say, just don't play it, unless you really need to upgrade it for the collection level. Then we have Star-Lord. Um, 
I will say that from the group of cards that cost two is uh, probably one of my favorite in the pool one. Uh, basically, it has only two of power, but if you are able to predict where your opponent is going to play the card uh, for a specific turn, then you can play it in the same location and then it will get plus three of power. Of course, if you don't catch the location where your opponent is play, playing, uh, then you will miss the bonus and that's kind of... Uh, a little bit of a waste but you can still try your luck if in case if you are not particularly able <laughs> in uh, uh, predicting the move you can still use the card just to see if you're lucky enough to to get the exact location but yeah it's an interesting one for a for a cheap starter card uh, i would say it's a it's a decent card then we have the thing basically for the thing the same logic that i was saying for hulk abomination it applies four of, of, uh, of energy, six of power, and no extra ability. So if I have to rank them, of course, Hulk is the best, followed by Abomination, and one level below, we find the thing. So uh, I will say that in this first line, I'm not a big fan of any of the cards, um, but then if I really have to pick a favorite, it will be Star-Lord, followed by the Punisher. But this line, I will say it was really unfortunate, because there are many cards that I don't like. Then we go to the third line where we have, first of all, Jessica Jones. <clears throat> this is a card that as uh, soon as you progress in the game, you will stop using it most likely. But when you're playing only with cards from pool one, this is definitely one of the best cards that you might unlock. Because as you can see, it has a, a four of power. But if you do not play in the exact same location in the next turn, this four becomes eight, which I will say that in an early deck is a quite powerful ability. So very good, recommended if you just have, a, let's say a new pack of cards and you don't have a very lar large collection already. Then we have Kazar. Kazar is a good card in combination uh, with um, the one cost card. So if you have many cards, if you play many cards that cost one, you definitely want to play Kazar with them because its ability is basically to boost um, all those cards that cost one and give them an extra level of power. So you could play it in theory with the Misty Knight, with Silver, etc. etc. Um, it's useful. I have seen many people using Kazar and uh, one cost card, uh, um, let's say, effectively, especially in the first um, pool of cards. But I will still say that it's not exactly my favorite, so I will still prefer Jessica Jones over Kazar. They cost the same, four of energy, but yes, still Kazar is a good card, I would say. Then we have Sentinel. The, uh, the ability of Sentinel is basically to add another copy of... Uh, of this card to your hand as soon as you play it. So you will never run out of Sentinel if you keep playing this card, basically. It costs two and gives you three of power. Um, it's uh, also an okay card. I will not say it's incredibly overpowered. I will not say that it's that bad. I think it's good, this possibility of regenerating the same copy of the same card and playing it again later on in the game. Uh, but still, it's not exactly my favorite. And then, as you can see, I have two Sentinel. The card is exactly the same. It works the same in the same way. It's just that I have two different graphic representation of the card. Then we have Mr. Fantastic. Um, Mr. Fa Mr. Fantastic is a very nice card when you're playing only with uh, pool one. Um, what does it do? Basically, it makes sure if you play it in the central location, in the middle, that you get two points in the middle, but also two points to the left and to the right, because uh, you, it gives you two of power to all adjacent locations. This is why I'm saying that ideally you want to play this in the middle, similarly to Medusa, basically. Um, if you do not play Mr. Fantastic in the middle, then you will uh, give the plus two only to one location. So if you play it on the right or on the left, of course, it will only boost additionally the middle location. So play it in the middle. That's my recommendation, and it's a decent card, so it could be included in your deck, I would say. Then we have Spectrum. This is a card that 
On paper is very powerful, on the other hand I must also admit that I rarely built, uh, especially with just pool 1, I rarely built a deck that was uh, all ongoing cards, so I never really took, or let's say, I rarely took advantage of this card, because basically its ability, uh, it requires to have other ongoing cards uh, on the deck, on the, not on the deck, on the, on the table, so it gives you plus 2 of power per each ongoing cards, so it works well, for example, in combination of uh, Mr. Fantastic and uh, of, of other ongoing cards, but if you are not playing mainly with a deck of, on of ongoing cards, maybe it's a little bit of a waste. So going to this line, my absolute favorite is absolutely Jessica Jones and probably followed by Mr. Fantastic rather than Spectrum. But still, Spectrum is a powerful card, right? I'm, don't, don't say that I said that it's a terrible card, okay? I'm just saying I never really played it that much or let's say that effectively, so I still prefer other cards over it, but it's still a powerful card. Now as time fl is flying, let's move to the next card. We have Nightcrawler. <clears throat> this is another early game card. It costs one, it gives you two of power, and uh, it's much better already than all the Misty Knight, the Quicksilver, etc. Um, because basically it has the ability that you can move, you can change the location of this card once. So for all the other cards, wherever you play them, except the movement cards, where you play them is where they stay. Uh, this is one of the exception, and it's the only card that costs one that you can really move around. So um, it might be extremely useful to have Nightcrawler. You might need to move the card to another location to maybe reinforce a little bit the position you have in that location, or maybe because you place it early in the game and later on you turn out that um, the location where you place it is not optimal, is not where you want to play, and then you can move it somewhere else where it makes more sense. So uh, if you are playing with the Quicksilver or Misty Knight, then if you have already unlocked Nightcrawler, please replace those cards <laughs> and make sure that you have better one cost card in your deck. Then we have Wolfsbane. <clears throat> it has a non-reveal ability, it gives you plus two of power for each other card you have in that location. Um, so this basically, it works in a similar manner of uh, Iron Man, so to say. So it relies on uh, you having other cards uh, on, uh, on that location. The main difference is that Iron Man works as an ongoing ability. So you can also add them later on while walls when um, you get this bonus on reveal. So please make sure that you already have the other cards in the same location. Then we have Ant-Man. Ant-Man, it's, uh, it's a card that, I don't know, I have, I have weird feelings about this because I really love the character. <laughs> I really love Ant-Man. Uh, but in this game, I don't know, I, I find it, uh, I don't know, I'm not a fan of this card in the game. I love the character, but not the card in the game. And the reason for that is because, as you can read here in the ongoing capability, is that if you have three other cards here, you get plus three of power. What does it mean? It means that if you play it early in the game, and this is usually played early in the game because it has one of cost, one of energy, uh, but then, similarly to what I was saying for Okai, you will make kind of clear that you are going to fill that location because that is ideally what you would like to do if you really want to uh, take advantage of this uh, little bonus. And this will make, again, your um, gameplay kind of predictable. The other option will be to place it at the hand, so once you have already filled a position, a certain location, but then in that case you would rather use other cards like Wallsbane or Iron Man. Of course, they have a different cost, but at that point of the game probably that's what you will do. But played at the beginning of the of the match, I don't know, I think it kind of announced too much where you're going to uh, build your, your game, basically. Then we go to White Tiger. <clears throat> this is a very nice card. Of course, it requires you also to use it in the most optimal way, but it's a very powerful card because it is true that it adds only one of power to the location where you play it, but then on reveal, it will add this other card that has seven of power to a separate location. Now, the disadvantage of playing this card is that you do not really have in theory, control of where 
this seven seven power card is going to be placed in which location so you don't have full control of the location you are going to boost but this of course and that's why i said you have to learn how to play this card correctly this is something that you can somehow force because for example if the other locations are already full of course you have full control this uh, second card will be created in the location that still has the free spot so it's a very good card but you have to play it correctly because if you just play it like this randomly you don't know in which location the seven uh, seven power card will show up and then uh, it might not boost the location where you were hoping to get the boost then we reach one of the no actually i would say probably the most powerful card of the pool one uh at least in my opinion this is incredibly powerful and you can do a number of things with this card this is odin it gives you already quite a significant boost in that location with this plus eight of power but his true power is actually the ability it activates on the reveal the own, re own reveal abilities of your other cards at this location so this is the perfect end game card if you have a non-reveal deck and if you have several unreveal cards in a certain location and you want to boost them dramatically you place odin there and basically it will re-trigger the um the unreveal ability of those cards think for example of white tiger this is also a non-reveal card which basically means that if you place odin in the same location where you place the card that was giving one of energy it will re-trigger this again and create a second seven power card in another location uh, there are several other combinations that you can uh, you can use but basically yes you really want to use odin to keep multiplying the effect of your um on reveal cards so it's an extremely powerful card not only in terms of value the value that brings to the table but also this potential if used in combination with other strong on reveal cards then we have colossus colossus is extremely useful in certain location where for example uh, you will have your the, the value of your car reduced you want to maybe secure that location you could place it there because this car can't be destroyed moved or have its power reduced um, so this can be very useful of course it's a little bit depending on the situation uh, depending on the location that uh, are spawning for that match but it's still i would say a decent card uh, especially for for this cost so if you need a filler in your deck this is something that you might want to add now going to this line there are a number of different cards that i consider nice because uh, nightcrawler is one of the best one cost cards from pool one but on the other hand of course i cannot mention hodin as my favorite absolute favorite of this line and i also like white tiger quite a lot so yeah probably i would say odin and nightcrawler just because really it's one of the most powerful one cost card but also white tiger is very 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 powerful let's move to the next uh, <clears throat> to the next line we have mr sinister basically what it does when you play this card it creates a clone in the same location with the same power so in the end you will have two cards with two of power and it's an easy way of getting a plus four personally i don't like this card too much unless you are starting then to destroy the cards in that location because i mean wasting two slots out of four in every location you can play maximum of four cards so wasting two location out of four for in the hand two and two of power i don't particularly like i think it only makes sense if then one play another card that retain the power and reduce the number of cards played in that location but alternatively you might want to rather play with um where was she Tu -tu 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 cannot find her with medusa with medusa in the middle you get the same after the same result in the end of a plus four but you waste only one slot uh, of um, of the four available but of course assuming that you're going to play her in the middle while night mr sinister of course you can play it in every location uh so not the biggest fan but still might make sense in some cases then we have angela when you play a card here plus two of power it's uh, i would say a decent card to boost uh, 
what you have in a certain location but still i'm not the biggest fan of this card as well to be honest and then we reach the the very first uh, real movement card uh, of this review and this is the doctor strange as you can see on reveal it move your highest power cards to this location um <clears throat> it's a um, it's a good card if you master the movement mechanic in this game and i have unfortunately to say that i am not there yet <laughs> so i i am not very good with movement decks uh, i've seen some nice players playing this card very effectively but i never really managed in my very first week of game uh so i have mixed feelings uh, around this card i think probably if i will really get how to use it in the proper way um i will start liking it but honestly i i just use it the bare minimum to upgrade it and um yeah i mean i'm not the biggest fan of this card either or in general of the movement cards with the exception of Nightcrawler and maybe some others. Um, then we have Kraven. When a card moves here, this gets plus two of power. Um, this is also a card that I didn't play too much. It's it's an okay boost as well. Um, and in the end, it doesn't cost much. But I believe that there are better cards uh, to be included in a deck. So yeah, maybe if this is one of the first that you unlock from the pool one of course it still makes sense to use it more than other cards that cost two uh, but then later on i think you will definitely replace it from your deck i, I rarely see people that keep using Kraven later on then we have um, armor armor is um, a card that basically uh, protect the whole location from destruction so this is a card that you might uh, use uh, not only to protect certain cards, I'm thinking specifically of a card from pool two, uh, which probably I should not mention in this video. Uh, but for example, I use this to protect my sunspot. If I was uh, pulling a lot of energy on my sunspot, which is a card from pool two, then I was protecting it with uh, armor because um, if, for example, somebody will have played Electra, then they will have uh, easily removed all the points that I was uh, collecting with uh, Sunspot. So in some cases, it's good to protect your card, but you might also use this card to counter the players that are using the destroy mechanics. I didn't talk yet about that, but <clears throat> of course, some players purposely destroy their own cards and if you want to prevent them from doing that you might want to play armor in the location where they place the cards to be destroyed so this is actually a useful card um, a very useful card both in the defensive perspective to protect your card but also to counter the um, guys who are playing the destroying deck then we have morph and here i have very mixed feeling about this this card this is Potentially a very good card, uh, but you also have to learn how to play it and when to play it. Because basically, as you can read from the description, it becomes a copy of a random card in your opponent's hand. So not from your deck, from the hand of your opponent. And you, of course, have no idea of uh, what your opponent has in his hands. So there is, of course, the possibility of picking an incredible card like Odin but it might also turn into a Quicksilver. So you can clearly understand that the advantages and the disadvantages of playing this card are very similar. Now, how can you reduce the risk of picking a crappy card when you play Morph? There are basically two things based on my limited experience that I can advise you to do. First of all, try not to play this card if you see that your opponent plays a lot of cards that cost one. Maybe it's, a, it's one of those that plays all the cards that cost one and then drop a Gazar to boost them all, right? Uh, which means that there are high chances he might have other one cost car in his hand. And then you play Morph and maybe you get, I don't know, a Nightcrawler, for example. And that's still not ideal. I mean, it's still better than getting a Quicksilver, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but you don't want to use a three card, uh, a, cost, a, a card that costs three of energy to then get some crappy one cost card, right? Uh, so something that you could avoid is playing it if you see that your opponent has uh, quite a number of uh, one cost cards because there are chances that then it turns into something not 
let's say that useful and also another advice that i can give you is to play it late in the game because if you play it late in the game let's say turn four uh, sorry turn turn five no, yeah, four five probably there are already higher chances that your opponent got rid of most of the cards that are let's say useless and that uh, is remaining only with the very strong powerful cards in his hand so there are higher chances that this will turn into let's say an odin an alk whatever but be careful i mean this is a very good card but it can also ruin your matches very easily if not played correctly so coming to this line i have a little bit to to be quicker because we really have a lot of cards still to be reviewed here i will say that probably my favorite are armor and morph uh if i was probably able to really play the movement decks maybe i will include doctor strange but <laughs> that guy is not me not yet so for the moment i will say armor and morph then we go to the next line the next line wow it's full of very nice cards <clears throat> starting from professor x this has an ongoing ability that basically lock this location and uh, this is this can be extremely powerful as it can be also quite risky what does it mean it means that it locks the location where you play this card not only for your opponent but also for you so no one will be able to play on that location anymore from the moment you play this card and uh, that can be a problem of course because if you do not have control of the location you can understand that you place this you are basically losing that location until the end of the match so you want to play this when you are 100 percent sure that your opponent is not going to play most likely in the same location and to have a, let's say more power than your professor x or in general than your total power in that location so if you are quite secure quite safe about that uh, sorry quite confident about that then you're safe and you can play this card because you are almost sure that you're going to lock down that location and prevent your opponent from winning it in the future but really be careful because this can also be a boomerang then we have onslaught uh, onslaught <clears throat> is that type of uh, card that you want to play with um, mr fantastic spectrum so this is the typical card that you will have on an ongoing deck because as you can see it double the other ongoing effect at this location so um, i enjoyed this card but as i was saying for spectrum i didn't play ongoing decks that extensively so it was very useful and powerful when i used it um, but i didn't really use it many times for its own ability many times i was just using it for its seven more as a filler for the end game um, but yeah ideally you should play this as part of an ongoing deck then we have domino <clears throat> uh, domino is a card that basically the only advantage that it has is that you are sure that you are going to pick this uh, for the second turn of the game and so you know that you're basically able in the second turn to pull somewhere this card and grant this uh, plus three of power but apart from that it does not do anything else it's just let's say to make uh, to yourself your uh, strategy kind of predictable so there are phases that you can really predict like having the certainty that in the second turn you're going to pull this card this is not the only case the other is quicksilver another card is uh, america chavez as well um but domino personally i mean i don't particularly like this card uh so yeah i will also advise you to probably replace it with better cards that cost two then we have sword master and uh, this is the first discard card that we are reviewing in uh, this video i never thought about the discard uh, mechanic of the game so what is this basically why why would somebody discard cards from uh, his own hand uh the reason for that is that there are cards that have bonuses in case if they get discarded from the deck and the most typical the most obvious example is apocalypse card that we will review better later on for example when you discard this uh, this card from your hand it will come back to your hand with the plus four of power and this can be triggered several times so this card potentially can go from eight of power up to i think 20. so as you can see there is also a, this could be also part of a strategy to discard 
on purpose the cards from uh, your own hand. And that's the reason why then some people play Sword Master, which is also a good card because on top of discarding the, the card and if you have built your deck uh, for this perspective, it's uh, of course doing a good job. But also on top of that, it has also this nice six of power. So I would say it's a good card if you're playing a discard deck. Then we have Enchantress. Enchantress is basically the nightmare of uh, everyone who is having uh, an ongoing deck because as you can see as the on reveal abilities to remove the abilities from all ongoing cards in a given location and on top of that it also has a nice four of uh, power because of that it's a it's a nice card i would say it's quite powerful on the other hand I will say that among the cards that cost four in the pool one, I think that there are cards that I was enjoying more, starting from Jessica Jones. Also because, as I said, there are not a lot of people who play an ongoing deck just with cards from pool one. Myself, I did it rarely, so you don't really need to use the ability of Enchantress that frequently just in pool one. Uh, and then for the four of cost and four of power, then there are better cards, like as I said, Jessica Jones, because then it costs you four, but then it can go from four to eight of power. But it's still a nice card, so I will still I, I was still playing it uh, sufficiently. And then the last of this line we have that look. This is uh, instead the the first time that we have a card to talk about the destroying mechanic of the game. So similarly to the discard option, there is also the possibility of destroying your own cards. And this is what you will typically do, for example, with that look, a card that costs three and give you five of power. Basically, it destroys the other cards that you have in that location. And as I said, there are reasons why one would like to either discard or destroy cards, because there are other cards that basically get triggered by that. Uh, and we will review them uh, later on. But uh, for the moment, let's just say that for the destroy mechanic, this is a very strong card from the first pool of cards. Um, then when we will see the cards that match well with it, I will tell you. So from this line, I would say that probably my favorite is definitely Professor X, if, because if played correctly, this is uh, an incredible card. It really secured one location. And then basically you have to focus only on uh, the remaining location to win the game. So you are halfway there if you play correctly this, uh, this card. But I also enjoy Enchantress and that lock when I was playing Destroying Decks. So yeah, second place uh, I will say for both of them. But definitely the first for this line is Professor X. Let me see where are we. Uh, still we have... Quite a number of cards to go so i will try to speed up the process so we have uh, lizard for the next card it has an ongoing uh, uh, skill it costs five but it gets minus three of power if your opponent has played four cards in the same location uh, this is a card that i've seen uh, used frequently in the first pool of cards um, me personally i was using it as well but I will still not uh, consider one of the most uh, OP card Lizard. Which, on the other hand, I will definitely say for Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch is uh, a fantastic card. Also because, let's say that <coughs> her ability is unique in the pool 1. Of course, if we take a look at the other pools, there are similar cards. Like, for example, in pool 2, there is Reno. Uh, but yeah, in pool, in pool one, this is the only card that will allow you to change the location in a certain place. So where you place this card, then it will change the current location to another location. The only disadvantage of this card is that the new location, as you can read here, is random. So you do not have control on that. From this perspective, I like Reno more because you know what the location is going to turn into. With Scarlet Witch, you do not really know. So there are many cases where you might want to change the location because maybe it's not an ideal location for you to play or maybe because, uh, I don't know, there are some limitations that you want to get rid of or maybe because you don't want your opponent to get a certain bonus, I don't know, after turn four or turn three, you want to make sure that they don't manage to get that bonus and then you change it slightly before 
um, they get that bonus. So for that, for this kind of location change, you need to use Scarlet Witch. So it's an extremely powerful card, but always consider the risk that the new location might be worse than the one you were originally changing. Like, for example, you might change a location that you don't particularly like in a location where it gives you, I don't know, that every card has a minus three of power or minus two of power, you know, and in this way you are already sabotaging the, the power and the effectiveness of Scarlet Witch in that location. But generally speaking, based on my personal experience, it's kind of rare the Scarlet Witch turned the location into a crappy location, into a crappier location. So generally speaking, this for me, it was one of my favorite cards from the pool one together with Jessica Jones, for example, and Odin. These are cards that for me should all be in, uh, in every deck from pool one. Then we have Strong Guy. Uh, it has an ongoing capability. If your hand is empty, it gets plus six of power. Honestly, it was quite rare for me that uh, it was um, that my hand was empty. This is of course, of course, a card that you want to use in case if you have a deck that is mainly a discard deck, because then it might increase the chances that your hand will be empty. Uh, but when I played this card, usually it was just for its uh, standard four and not really for the plus six of power. So I cannot really vouch too much for a strong guy. Then we have Korg, another card that cost one. This is an early game card and it shuffle a rock into your opponent's deck. Honestly, there are better cards than Korg to be played at the beginning of the game. We have already seen a few and um, yeah, if you have nothing better, yeah, play Korg. Um, I definitely still better Korg than a Quicksilver, no need to say. Then we have Bishop. When you play a card, this gains plus one of power. This is quite uh, a useful card because it upgrades over time. Um, so I will say that it might uh, be convenient to, to have this card in your deck if you are going to, to plan to play many cards in the remaining uh, turns. So if you are somebody who plays many cards, include Bishop, because then this will boost significantly. And then we have Blade, which is another card from the discard mechanic. But in this case, it will discard generally a card from your hand, uh, so you don't have full control on which card it gets discarded, similarly to Swordmaster. With the difference that was smart, Swordmaster is more powerful because it has six of power, while Blade has only three. But it is also true that Blade costs much less as well. But basically, they work in the same way. So coming to this line, my absolute favorite is Scarlet Witch, and the second place might either be Lizard or Bishop. Then we have uh, Nova. Nova is another early game card. When this card is destroyed, it gives your card plus one of power. So as you can see, this is uh, another card that benefit from being destroyed. So include it to your deck if you are going to play a destroy deck with uh, that lock uh, and uh, other cards like that. Um, <clears throat> then we have Cable. Or you will put the bottom card of your opponent's deck into your hand. Um, of course, you will not know what will be the bottom card of your opponent's deck, um, but if you need to, to get new cards into, into your deck, then that might be a strategy. Um, maybe you are discarding a lot and you need to, let's say, counter that, then you have a card that doesn't cost too much that will allow you to get new cards into your hand or uh, yeah it could be played also in other in other ways but generally speaking i would consider cable more as a filler in a deck then we have nick fury another card that honestly i liked very much when i was playing only with cards from pool one because as you can see from the ability it will add three random cards that cost six to your hand and it is true that you don't have control on which card um, those will be so you do not know uh, if, how lucky you will be with the with the support that Nick Fury will uh, will provide. But on the other hand, it has three of them, and there are high chances that between those three cards, there is at least one six core card that is very powerful and that you can definitely definitely play. Sorry, I cannot talk for the very last turn of the game. 
maybe helping you to really achieve then that win. So I will consider Nick Fury as an, another extremely OP card from the pool one. And then we have uh, America Chavez. Uh, you always draw this card on turn six and not before. This is basically the same uh, logic of uh, Domino, as I was saying. Um, so it's basically to make sure if you really want to have control on what cards you're going to pull from your, uh, from your deck at specific turn, then you want to have America Chavez because you will always have the certainty that in the last turn of the game, no matter what happened, then you're going to get your... Um, your card that costs six but it gives you nine of power which is i will say quite good of course an alk will be stronger but still this can be a useful card as well if you really want to have control on what you pull from your deck <clears throat> then we have watu watu the watcher this is in my opinion one of the most underrated cards in the game especially among the cards that cost one and give you two of power uh, I often include it in my deck. It doesn't mean that then I necessarily play it, uh, but I often include it because its ability is unique and it's extremely powerful. Because as you can see, it uh, gives you the possibility to see the unrevealed location before they're actually revealed. And as I have, have explained in the video about the fundamentals, it basically takes the first three turns to see all three locations. And it's an incredible advantage to see it for example, from turn one, if it immediately show up in your hand, you can see it already in turn one, what are the other two locations? And this can help you a lot because there might be locations where you don't want to play because, for example, maybe you get extra energy if you leave that location empty. Or maybe there are locations where you definitely want to play because you want to win that location before a certain turn to get some extra bonus. And so you want to, let's say, start moving there before your opponent does and your opponent might not know what is that location. Maybe it's the third location and you will find out only after three turns, basically. So it's, um, it's a very useful card. Not a lot of people play it. And honestly, I don't see why, because it's an incredible advantage to already know where you are going to build your game. It, it already defines your strategy for the rest of the game a lot. Then we have Yondu, this is a card, another card that costs one and gives you two of power and basically it removes the top card of your opponent deck. Um, this is also useful if you want to weaken the, the, the deck of course of your, of, of your opponent. Imagine if your opponent has, I don't know, a Hulk or an America Chavez or whatever, uh, Jessica Jones, you know, it might pick whatever card, but the top card of your opponent's deck is going to be uh, removed. And there are, of course, also good chances that you might uh, remove uh, a card that is very uh, useful to your opponent's uh, strategy. So not bad as a card that costs one. But again, to me, Nightcrawler remains probably the best uh, in the pool one. What do I really like it as well for the reason that I already mentioned? But in the end, also Yondu has uh, his own reason to exist. So among these uh, cards here in this line, ah, that's a that's a big uh, that's a big challenge. I would say probably Nick Fury and Watu, but I also like America Chavez and also as a second option Yondu. But definitely Nick Fury, yeah, it's a lot of potential. That cards that he randomly plays in your hand, and Watu for the incredible advantage of knowing the location from the very beginning if you immediately pull him in your hand uh, from turn one. So then we got to Lady Sif. Lady Sif is another <coughs> uh, card that is used uh, for the discard deck, but it's uh, the most powerful, I will say, the, the most powerful with the discard option uh, from the pool one, because it discards the highest cost card from your hand. And uh, why it's so powerful is because usually this is used in combination with uh, Apocalypse that I have already briefly shown. And in most of the cases, when there is a discard deck from pool one, Apocalypse is going to be the most expensive uh, card from your deck, from your end. So this is basically very nice. If you also pulled Apocalypse, you are going to play Lady Sif to make sure that then Apocalypse get discarded and then it will be regenerated with the plus four. In this way, you, are really, you have really control on which card is going to get discarded 
which is not necessarily the case with Swordmaster or, for example, Blade. So, very good card, especially in combination with Apocalypse. Then we have Devil D Dinosaur. This is a, an ongoing, it has an ongoing capability which gives you plus two of power for each card in your hand. Uh, <clears throat> also, this one is an extremely powerful card. I've seen a lot of people playing this card like masters. And uh, also myself, I must say, in many cases, it gave me good, 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 good wins. So this is another extremely recommended card. Um, exactly as Spider Woman. This is another of my absolute favorite. On reveal, it afflicts all enemy cards in that location with a minus one of power. So this is a card that on top of giving you seven of, uh, of power, which is already quite a significant boost in a certain location, it will decrease the power of your opponents. So if there is a particularly contested location where you have a little margin, you can play this card to boost your value in that location and also at the same time affect your opponent. Uh, you have seen how I played this in the, if you have watched the previous video related to Marvel Snap, there was a match I played there just to, to show you how the game works and you have seen me using this card in that match. So a card I particularly love, I cannot deny. And then we have Ironheart, I have two versions but basically it's the same card. Um, it gives three friendly cards plus two of power. <clears throat> this is used quite frequently. It's also used frequently in combination of Odin, as I was already mentioning. Odin re-triggers the on-reveal capability. So this means that if you have played Ironheart and then you play um, Odin, you will re-trigger again this thing that three friendly cards gets plus two of power. So this is a very good card to boost some of the cards that you have already played. The only disadvantage is that you do not know exactly which cards are going to be boosted. And of course, you do not know in which location. So it's kind of tricky too, but it's quite useful to get a plus two for three cards that you have already played. Let's complete this line with uh, Mantis, uh, another card that costs one and gives you two of power. Uh, so similarly to the other cards, um, of, uh, of the Guardians of the Galaxy. It uh, relies uh, on uh, you predicting where the card was, uh, where your opponent has played his card in the same turn. But if you get it correctly, then you will draw a card from your opponent deck. So this can be useful, but honestly, I was not really using this card too much. So coming to this line, then my favorite is definitely Spider Spider Woman, followed by Devil Dinosaur. Yeah. If you play this card deck, definitely you want to have Lady Sif though. Then we are slowly, slowly approaching the end of this video. Sorry for this very long content. I hope you're finding it useful and I hope it will help you in your initial journey on Marvel Snap. So let's go to the next line. We have Moon Girl. This card costs four and give you four of power, exactly like uh, Jessica Jones, uh, exactly like Enchantress, but her ability is to duplicate your hand. So whatever you have in your hand, you will have those cards twice. Um, which of course it can be very useful if you have strong cards for the hand game, you might want to place this in the middle of the, of the game um, and make sure that you have two copies of the same good cards that you already have in your hand. Uh, apart from that, it does not really make a lot of sense to uh, play this card. And as I said, there are other cards that cost four that might have uh, better, better usage. But if you really have good hands and you want to really duplicate your hands, then you might want to play Munger. Then we have uh, Gamora. Gamora, exactly as I said, uh, all the Guardians of the Galaxy cards rely on your capability of predicting where the opponent is going to play the cards, because if you pick the same location where they are going to play, then there are bonuses that get activated. And in this case, with Gamora, she already brings a plus seven of power, and then if uh, the opponent played in the same location, it will get an additional plus five, which makes this card very powerful as well so it's a very nice card in my opinion 
Uh, Rocket Raccoon works exactly in the same way, but it's a card that costs one and give you two of power and it only gets boosted of plus two of power. So <clears throat> this is a very good card as an early game, exactly like, um, I would say, together with Nightcrawler, together also with, um, I don't know, yeah, with Star Lord also, same logic but plus three of power um so these are cards that yes you can definitely use to replace those useless quicksilver misty knight etc um and then of course you want to have nightcrawler <laughs> i will never stop repeating this in the course of the video then let's go to the next one there is forge cost two and give you one of power give the next card you play plus two of power yes it can be useful at the beginning of, of the game but no i don't think this is really like the strongest card in the game uh at least among the cards that cost two uh there are better options but there are situations where you might want to have a filler like forge then there is a Squirrel Girl, <clears throat> a card that it can be bad and nice at the same time, depends from, from your perspective. What I don't like is that it creates a lot of uh, small cards that are kind of not needed. You know that I don't like, I've already expressed this, that I don't like, like for Mr. Sinister, like this thing of filling locations with low rated card, um, that's for me not really the ideal but for example think of the potential of squirrel girl combined with other cards that cost one and then with kazar boosting them all you can understand that it has a lot of potential so it depends how you're going to play it um but yeah you have to take into account the disadvantage of filling the, the location each location with the one power squirrel then we complete this line with Carnage. Uh, Carnage is another card that uh, is, uh, let's say, usually included in the destroying deck because it destroys your other cards in the same location and then it gets plus two of power for each card that got destroyed. So if you're playing a destroying deck, this is also something that you definitely want to have there. And it could also be useful, for example, to get rid of... Uh, let's say those cards that um, like for example like squirrel gear you know like if there are cards that are flooding a certain location and you need to make room then use a carnage and free the location there while increasing the power of carnage coming to this line my absolute favorite is Kamora there is um, no question about that followed by the rocket raccoon that for a one cost card is uh, Quite nice if you are able to predict where your opponent is going to play. Then we have Blue Marvel, a card that needs to be unlocked uh, at the beginning of the game, completing a number of um, challenges, let's say a number of uh, missions. Uh, but it's absolutely worth because it works in a similar way compared to Iron Heart. But while Iron Heart give uh, plus two of power to three random friendly cars, uh, cars cards. Uh, Blue Marvel instead it will give all your other cards plus one of power So it's only plus one, but it will boost all of them not just three random friendly card So it's uh, it's very nice. Uh, it's a very nice boost and um, Yeah, I will recommend you using it again. This is an ongoing card So if you are having an ongoing deck you might want to play it together with spectrum together with uh, onslaught etc etc then we have White Queen, <clears throat> a card that when I unlocked it during the pool one, I, I really loved it. I was playing it very frequently. Um, now probably less, a little bit less, but it's still very a very effective card. Not only because it gives you plus six to the location where you play it, but also because it will allow you to draw a copy of the highest cost card in your opponent's hand. Which basically means that if your opponent has some card like, I don't know, it could be a Nick Fury, it could be an Hulk, it could be an Odin, whatever, you're going to get a copy in your deck and you're going to prepare yourself on top of your cards that you already have from your deck, you're going to secure a solid card for the end game while also getting uh, this plus six. So this is, uh, this is a good card. Um, 
what I would recommend you to do probably if you are also having cards like Nick Fury, etc, etc, try to pick only one type of cards like this because with Nick Fury you will draw already three powerful cards, with White Queen you can get one powerful card, um, try not to have too many of those cards because they are kind of overlapping, um, so just take the one that uh, let's say gives you the most consistent results so to say but white queen i really i really love it uh, when i unlocked it then we have electra this is another card that costs one and it will allow you to destroy a card that cost one as well um i will tell you something so this is more related to the second pool of card but usually i play electra when i have to destroy an opponent that has sunspot and that has boosted the value of sunspot already significantly um, this is the, the case where i find electra extremely useful uh, but of course it can be used also to destroy other uh, <clears throat> one cost car like rocket raccoon for example uh, or like the cards that we have already seen in the course of this video um, of course you have to keep in mind that if there are more one cost card in that location you do not know which one is going to be destroyed might not be the one that you were hoping it will be destroyed this is ex exactly what happened in the same game i was referring to before if you watched my previous video dedicated to marvel snap uh, this is exactly what happened i would i played electra hoping to destroy a certain card but then it got destroyed it got destroyed another card that was costing one i think it was quicksilver um so yeah it can happen so try to place this uh, only after you have identified the card that you want to destroy and ideally if there is only one cost card in that location also another newbie mistake that i see that i saw very frequently with electra people playing it just because it has one of power a lot of people playing it at the very first turn without even knowing where the opponent is going to play its first card and so in most of the cases without finding the target right so you better want to keep it in your deck for when you really know where your opponent has placed the one cost card and then you can really try to target that specific card that's my advice for using electra in the effective way <clears throat> then we have alkbuster on reveal this card merge with a, a random friendly card at this location yes it can be useful but no i'm not the biggest fan of it first of all because it merge um, so it means that it does not really help you with the discard or the destroy deck because this is completely different mechanic, the merging. And the second thing that I don't like is that you don't have full control on what card is going to be merged into Hulk Buster. I mean, of course, if you are playing it in a location where you only have one card, you have full control on that. But if you are playing it later on, it might merge you with a card that maybe you didn't want to, to merge into that. Um, then we have Apocalypse, I have already talked about this a lot when we were talking about the discard mechanic, uh, so this definitely it must be included in your deck if you're playing a discard deck and definitely you should include it uh, with Lady Sif because it's the one that has the highest chance of discarding this card, increasing his potential. And then we have Heimdall, Heimdall move your other cards one location to the left um, typically you want to do this for example to secure one location where there are there were not many cards played and so you can still grant that you win that location with this eight and in the meantime you move all the others to the left to make sure that all together maybe they help you winning a second location this is one of the possible usage it can be all used also in other ways of course a little bit more creative this is a movement card after all uh, but it's a good one it's a, a good hand game card if you are good at mastering the movement mechanic so coming to this line my absolute favorite is of course blue marvel um i also enjoyed a lot white queen uh, sorry white queen as i said uh, but of course if you are having a discard deck this is the card that you definitely want to include in your and then we are almost there guys we need only other this other line and then until namor so it's very very close the end of the video so we have wolverine this is another card that is fundamental if you are having either a discard or a destroying deck because when this is discarded or destroyed it gets regenerated and it played 
at a random location. Of course, the disadvantage is that you do not know where it will be played, yeah, but it's still very good that you could destroy or discard and still have an extra card coming to the table. So it's an extremely powerful card, I would say, for the destroying or discarding decks. Also, Cosmo, it's quite a powerful card. <clears throat> it's an ongoing card that basically uh, removes the on-reveal abilities from a certain location. So, yeah, it has, uh, it has a, a huge potential to counter the decks that are mainly built on uh, on-reveal capabilities. <clears throat> so you want to play that to counter that. So it's, think of it like the opposite of Enchantress. So Enchantress removes the abilities from all ongoing cards at this location, and Cosmo is an ongoing card that removes the on-reveal abilities at that location. So they work in the same way. So you can, you can include them in your deck based uh, on what type of cards you have. So if you want to counter your, uh, let's say, logic opponent, then plays either Cosmo or Enchantress. Um, then we have Iron Fist, another card that costs one, not my favorite one. Um, this is another movement card. Basically, it uh, moves the next card that you play one location to the left. Um, this can be the main usage of this card is basically to try to reach location where otherwise you will not be able to play a card. But I really don't like it. For a one cost card, as I said, there are better options, starting from Nightcrawler, Rocket Raccoon, uh, Watu, etc. So then we have Angel. <clears throat> when one of your cards is destroyed, this flies out of your deck to replace it. This is, again, something that needs to be in your deck if you have a destroying, uh, a destroying uh, deck. Imagine the situation where you have uh, Wolverine, uh, then you have uh, something like Deathlock, and also you have in your deck Angel. And then you use Deathlock to destroy Wolverine. What it will happen is that you will have Deathlock, you will have Wolverine spawning in, a, in a, one random location, uh, so coming back to life. And then you will also get Angel because someone, some card was destroyed from, from your game. So it's a very powerful way to put a lot of cards uh, to the table, even cards that you did not really played on uh, on your own, uh, but that gets automatically played upon destruction. So definitely needed for the destroy deck. Then we have multiple men. This is another movement card. When this moves, uh, it adds a copy to the all location. This is something that you could typically place together with Iron Fist. So you could play Iron Fist and then immediately after a multiple men, what it will happen is that then Iron Fist will push um, multiple men to the left, but also multiple men, a copy of multiple men will also remain in his old location. So these are typical combinations <clears throat> that you will play together, but as I don't like particularly the movement card, as I have already said, at least not from pool one, uh, I will say that I'm not a big fan of Iron Fist as well as I'm not a big fan of multiple men. Then we complete this line with uh, a card that is quite uh, powerful to try to take simultaneously control of two locations in one shot. This is a card that gives you four of power in the location where you play it, and also it gives plus six of power to the location to the right. So this is a card that you could play at the end of the match to really try to boost um, let's say your your current situation if you are leading in two uh for example in two adjacent location you could place this then to make sure that also the second location is uh, getting boosted as well and that you are securing that advantage in those two adjacent locations um so it's a very good card i would say <clears throat> there are of course better cards but it's still quite powerful so if i have to say my favorite from here well, definitely Cosmo as basically the counterpart of Enchantress, um, but also also Wolverine, for example, is nice. It depends on what kind of deck you're building. So if you are having a destroyed deck, definitely it's Wolverine and Angel. Um, but also Cosmo is very powerful for his ability of uh, uh, basically undermining the unreveal un un cards uh, in the given location. So then we have uh, Groot. 
Groot is uh, another card from the Guardians of the Galaxy, so it also relies on uh, your ability of predicting where your opponent is going to play. But if you predict correctly and you play Groot in the same location where your opponent is playing, then uh, you will get a plus three of power. So this will go up to six. So it's a very nice card. Last but not least, we have Namor. It's an ongoing card, so ideal for an ongoing deck. It gives you plus five of power if this is the only card that you are playing in a certain location. It's a good card as long as you're playing only with um, pool one, because uh, if you're also playing with cards from pool two, I can definitely see that 10 in a certain location being uh, rapidly uh, surpassed by your opponent and then you will be obliged to head on top other cards in the same location but then this Namor will not count anymore as a 10 it will count again just as a 5 so it's it's a good card but I I will say that it's very powerful if you're playing only with uh, a pool 1 cards and that's all basically because then from Killmonger till all the others these are all cards that belong to the pool 2 that I'm about to complete. Of course, there will be a video about the pool two coming very soon. So if you have enjoyed this content, I hope it was helpful. And if you have enjoyed this content, please leave a like, maybe subscribe because I will continue to post content uh, related to Marvel Snap and to share my own opinion, strategies, whatever. So I hope to see you there. And that's all for today. So cheers.